If a butterfly flaps its wings, tornadoes are created on the other side of the world. The butterfly effect isn't meant to be taken literally, but let's play pretend. Our actions have consequences, no matter how small we think they are. Episode 6, Pretend Daddy, is the final episode for the season of the rehearsal. In some ways, I feel like it's a sequel to the episode The Fielder Method in terms of its themes. Nathan is chasing a specific feeling. He genuinely wants to feel like a parent. The episode begins with one Adam leaving to grab some soda. When he returns, he is three years older. The younger version of himself peers out from behind the window, wistfully, perhaps with pangs of jealousy. The parents of the six-year-old actors are concerned that the children are having trouble separating their roles from real life. Nathan is forced to explain to one actor, more specifically the one he took to the synagogue in episode 5, that Judaism is pretend, and that Nathan will go to hell for not believing in Jesus Christ. In this moment, Nathan Fielder is using his uncomfortably dry wit to underhandedly make fun of this lady. It's, it's so awkward, perfect, N no notes, no notes. I mention this because this scene sets the stage for the real conflict of the episode. Remy, the child actor who peered out at his older incarnation through the window earlier, keeps sneaking into the birthday party, even though his scenes have been completed. Remy's mother, Amber, explains that in his real home life, he has an absent father. Because he is so young, he feels emotionally attached to Nathan, his pretend daddy. The narration here is still in character, but Nathan Fielder seems to actually be concerned about Remy's feelings, creating dissonance between what we are told and what we see. Having witnessed the potential negative influence he has had on Remy, Nathan's immersion is broken. He is not really able to transfer his emotions to the new Adam, whose real name is Liam. I'm going to refer to this actor as Liam to avoid confusion from now on. Nathan has set up several conflicts to test his wisdom and guidance as a parent. Now this is a major motif of the episode, resolution, so keep that in mind for the end. Ultimately, Nathan feels like the exercise is pointless. He states it's like solving a puzzle of his own design. He is in control of every step of this conflict. He created the bullying scenario, Liam gets sad, Nathan offers some advice, Liam is now happy. All of this feels like a computer coding language. If X, then Y. Liam feels these things because he is scripted to do so. There are no stakes here. Despite being a swell actor for his age, Liam is unable to suspend Nathan's disbelief. As we know from prior episodes, Nathan is jealous of others' abilities to immerse themselves into fantasy. Later on in the episode, Remy's mother, Amber, asks Nathan to meet with Remy to help her explain that Nathan has only been pretending to be Remy's dad. Not understanding the nature of the visit at first, Remy lights up when he sees Nathan. It's obvious that the little guy has been thinking of him. It's kind of cute. Nathan attempts to tie up this loose end, but Remy is sad, frustrated, and in denial. After speaking with Amber, Nathan gains some insight on how she feels about the role. It's clear she feels guilty for putting Remy in a situation that has caused him so much confusion. Amber admits that she is unsure if Remy even knows what acting is. I can sense a lot of frustration and anxiety in Remy's restless body language throughout these scenes. By the end of the talk, Remy seems to have calmed down, though I'm not sure if Remy has fully separated the role from reality. Ironically, Nathan experiences the opposite problem. He becomes obsessed with making his relationship with Adam feel indiscernible from reality. Over dinner, Nathan asks Liam how things are going with the bullies at school. Liam answers that the advice Nathan gave him worked. However, the successful parroting points Nathan just earned ring hollow. Nathan drops the act. He wants to be sure he isn't destroying some other young mind. To both Nathan's dismay and relief, Liam reveals that yeah, he knows it's a role. Nathan then asks Liam if he thinks he's a good dad. Liam responds that he is a great scene partner, which is not what Nathan wants to hear. He could play dad, sure, but can he actually be one? Can he really convince himself of that? Here's something interesting to think about. As babies, the atoms are essentially props. Babies don't really have the capacity to form concepts in their minds. Liam, on the other hand, is a professional who understands the role he is meant to play. He is capable of separating reality from fiction. For the actors in between, it's more difficult to make sense of how they fit into the production. 
They are at an age where they are just learning to make sense of the world around them, and mentally they appear to be stuck in a sort of limbo between their real lives and the characters they play. Honestly, you could probably convince these kids of anything. Remy's inability to separate fact and fiction parallels the viewer's confusion. We are deliberately meant to be confused while watching the show. It's often difficult to tell when Nathan is acting and when he is being himself. During the editing process, the narrative is altered even further since Nathan can pick and choose what we as viewers get to see. In the episode prior, we gain some insight into this fact when Nathan reviews the footage and reveals to us that Angela hasn't been performing her role when Nathan was absent from the home. By virtue of the format of this experiment as a reality TV show, we can expect that some things are omitted or strategically revealed in a sequence that reinforces Nathan's ideal plot. Reality is whatever Nathan wants it to be. In this next scene, I find Nathan's narration here unreliable. Though he claims that Remy's attachment to him is a mistake, I believe that Remy gave Nathan his first glimpse at an actual emotional connection. And that counts, right? After all, what has Nathan been chasing since episode 3? Selfishly, he wants to feel like a father. But, after realizing that his relentless pursuit of this feeling has caused harm, he sets out to ensure that he no longer seeks fulfillment at the cost of another young actor's well-being. It's time to examine where the mistake occurred. Nathan redoes some of the scenes he previously acted out with Remy, but instead has Liam play Remy playing Adam. This time, Nathan tries behaving more coldly towards Adam, but in the end, it doesn't feel right, and Nathan considers a different approach. To free himself of the temptation of forming a bond, Nathan hires a young adult to play Adam, and reenact these same scenes. The two seem to be having a great time, as discordant music plays in the background. He might not quite look the part, but that man can act. Unfortunately, the adultness is hard to ignore, and Nathan has a hard time being in the moment. Afterwards, Nathan rehearses with just a mannequin, but that's also weird and cringe. When all this fails, Nathan takes things a step further. He rehearses the moment from the beginning of the episode where he says goodbye to Amber and Remy on their last day of filming. He says his goodbyes to Remy, now played by Liam. This time, fake Angela is brought into the scene to see if her presence helps break Remy's immersion in the production. And I really have to wonder, like, What's this scene for? N none of the people in this scene are... <laughs> are... real? <laughs> it's, it's kind of weird. I believe it's here just because it segues into the next scene where fake Angela and Nathan rehearse their final conversation before Angela leaves the show. Every attempt ends in failure. Nathan is confronted with the fact that his past actions are not something he could fix and decides to meet with the real Angela to apologize. While this scene suggests that Angela's quoted scripture is just some confusing and preachy rhetoric, I believe what Angela is trying to get at with the you must forgive others 7 times 77 biblical quote makes sense thematically for Nathan. Nathan seems bewildered, and if you were too, the quote essentially means that it's not enough to just forgive someone one time, three times, or seven times. The amount of forgiveness that you should have for another must be infinite. Forgiveness is one of Nathan's major goals in this episode. He seeks forgiveness not only from Angela, Remy, and Amber, but he also desires self-absolution. The quote, love your neighbor as yourself, is also relevant to Nathan, because while the premise of the show seemed to focus on helping others, by episode 4 we've clearly reached a turning point where Nathan does almost everything for his own selfish wish fulfillment. Now, Nathan must see the error of his ways, fix what he has done wrong, and then learn to love himself and others. The rehearsal is often criticized for its ruthless manipulation and deceit. At this point, Nathan finally acknowledges the repercussions of creating a show that puts real people in such emotionally demanding situations. Having made amends with Angela, Nathan now seeks closure with Remy and Amber. Nathan visits Remy again, but this time with Liam. During the visit, Nathan asks Amber how she convinces herself that Remy will be okay, but her response mystifies Nathan. She replies that as a mother, she just knows. Could it be that the path to forgiveness lies in someone else's eyes? You may never be able to change what happened, but maybe, with a new perspective, you can try to change yourself. This narration is very familiar. You may recall, in my previous video when I analyzed episode 4, I criticized Nathan for learning the wrong lesson from his experiences as Thomas. Instead of changing himself and improving, he changes things around him in unrealistic ways. Turns out Nathan's last visit also served as a ploy for Liam to practice the Fielder method on Remy. 
you may recall Nathan asking where Amber got her sweater. That's character research. When Liam and Nathan reconvene in the car, Nathan asks, Did you get enough? Liam's playtime with Remy was a ruse, all in order to more seamlessly imitate him. Nathan begins a new rehearsal where he plays Amber and Remy is played by Liam. This all transpires within a replica of Remy's home that exists within the warehouse. The music accompanying this scene is this ethereal drone. It sounds like what you'd hear while exploring the furthest reaches of space, removed from all else in a sort of vacuum that exists beyond our own reality. They travel back to Remy's first day at the house in Oregon. Nathan meets fake himself as Amber and experiences this moment from the perspective as a parent as opposed to a director. We begin to see where maybe the real Amber began to worry about how this was emotionally affecting her child. Seeds of doubt are planted in Nathan's mind, watered by Remy's tears. Nathan recreates the scene where Amber confronts him about her concerns. It starts off pretty similar, but side by side, it's apparent that the actor playing fake Nathan is pretty disturbed by the conversation. A clear break from how the scenario originally played out where the real Nathan seemed a lot less concerned. Fake Nathan says, I hope it's okay. Yeah. The real Nathan, as this actor's boss, asks, Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Okay. When fake Remy breaks down after fake Nathan leaves the set, Nathan, as Amber, says, That man didn't mean to confuse you, honey. He just didn't know what he was doing. You know, he, he's not that different from you. He's just figuring stuff out and messing up along the way. Maybe we shouldn't have done that show, huh? It's like a, a weird thing for a little kid to be a part of. But you know what? Mommy's not perfect, okay? She makes mistakes too. And you're gonna make mistakes. Look at me, man. you know what? I think it's a good thing that you're sad because it shows that you have a heart and it shows that you can feel and you can love and you can put your trust in others. Nathan gets so lost in the moment that he finishes his pep talk by referring to himself as Remy's dad. Liam breaks character whispering, wait, I thought you were my mom. Nathan pauses. A very pregnant pause. No. I'm your dad. This scene has a lot to unpack as Nathan appears to admit that this whole show is a bad idea under the guise of a conversation between Amber and Remy. Not only does Nathan admit that the participation of child actors led to some inappropriate situations, but he also concedes that the concept of the rehearsal as a whole robs participants of the human experience. After all, to err is human. In times of hardship, the support we find in our loved ones strengthens our relationships with our community and reassures us that we can make it through even the most difficult situations as long as we have love. This is the answer to several of the questions that Nathan has been asking throughout the entire series. How do we form a real connection with people? How do we atone for our wrongdoings? How do we handle adversity in life? The answer to all of these questions is love. Love for others and perhaps more importantly, love for ourselves. The last half of this episode involves Nathan basically wrapping up the major motifs of the show. Three major breakthroughs happen during this pep talk. First, Nathan is able to look into the eyes of another and find forgiveness for his mistakes. He learns when you make a mistake, you have to own up to it in order to make it right. Nathan's intention was to make a funny show using his trademark humor, but in his attempt to cheat and find the perfect resolution, he creates even more problems, and ultimately, cheats himself. Second, Nathan solves a problem he didn't intentionally construct. Earlier in the episode, he mentions that his attempts at conflict resolution feel artificial because he knows the answers to all the problems he created for himself in his rehearsal. Here he has a problem he created but has no answer to. This is a problem created by the rehearsal, not something that you can rehearse to solve. The whole episode is a journey to that answer. Third, Nathan finally feels something and is able to fully immerse himself in the role of a father. Sure, he may have been playing the mom, 
But for a moment, he didn't see himself as Nathan the comedian or actor. He was Nathan the father. He finally achieves success with the Fielder Method, and everything comes full circle. Now, for the cleanup. Since my previous video, I've watched Synecdoche, New York. What a fascinating and strange movie. Funny, but also horrific. I think I still prefer Adaptation and Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, but Synecdoche was interesting. Definitely one you'll be thinking about. Fair warning, however, Synecdoche is a intentionally confusing film. If you were a viewer who thought that something like Inception was confusing, Synecdoche isn't for you. Honestly, I feel like I need to watch someone's breakdown of that movie myself. The similarities are definitely there between the rehearsal and Synecdoche. I interpret both as works that are about midlife crisis, becoming numb to the world around you, and becoming lost in your own work as it takes on a life of its own. Both feature recreations of real places erected in warehouses, and both works seem reflective of their authors. So, that's it for this season. How did I like it? Well, I loved it. The show gave us something I don't think anyone really expected. I really want to see what the next season will even be like. I'm assuming that since the pandemic is sort of less of a thing now for some people, maybe we can see rehearsals play out in different cities. As cool as the twist was this season, in terms of humor, I do prefer seeing a different client each episode. I would say that in terms of format, I do find the absurd nature of Nathan for you more enjoyable just to consume episode by episode. It's easier to just watch an episode of Nathan for you because each episode is separate. The rehearsal is meant to be viewed sequentially. Both series mine a lot of comedy from Nathan's awkward interactions or the absurd nature of the plan, but the rehearsal has the confidence to give you content that isn't just conventionally funny. There isn't a belly laugh a minute. The situations present, especially in the last three episodes, really linger on this discomfort. The show employs a foreboding soundtrack to accompany many of these scenes, and it's clear that the moments are not always meant to be funny. When Nathan is arguing with an actress he hired to be Angela, it's an intense moment. No, you're not the joke, not at all. No, no one's the joke. The situations are funny, but interesting too. To expel the tension, I laugh. It's not funny, but it's the only way I really know how to respond. Much like Thomas in the episode where he and Nathan talk about lying, I guess you just have to get that nervous energy out, somehow. The rehearsal is a show that spends too much time on the subject. It may not always be funny, but I do believe that it's always interesting. Life is filled with emotions that are more than just joy. The rehearsal is Nathan's grand experiment that addresses so many themes and emotions. Loneliness, growth, midlife crisis, abuse of power, death, grief, addiction, failure, conformity, sonder, truth, faith, guilt, and love. Nathan explores all of these concepts, making light of so many of these issues, but he also allows these issues to bear their real weight. In previous videos, I brought up the flack this sort of humor gets. I believe Nathan is critiquing his own methods. While we may laugh at the people on this show, they are all human. If we followed you around long enough, we could probably find something worth laughing about. But we would also find so many other characteristics that are in some way endearing or relatable, connecting us all together. If Nathan spent just as much time with, with the frozen yogurt shop owner, Brian Wolf, or Ray Primus, would things get as deeply uncomfortable? Not every single person that walks away has a bad experience, but who knows, some of these people who have been on the show may really regret it. I've mentioned at times that it feels like the show is laughing at the viewer. The ass shot at the end of the episode is evidence of that. The question is, are you able to laugh along? I just wanted to thank everyone who watched this video and my previous videos. I'm always so excited when I see new comments. I read all of them, and the amount of support I have seen has made me so happy. Please comment on what you think the second season would be about. Also, I'm open to suggestions on other video ideas. Again, thank you all. Until next time, bye-bye. Thank you.